Hey everybody, welcome to One Flight Down Basement Beer Tastings and a big happy birthday to me. Uh, I'm going to celebrate today with one of my fancy beers. So I've talked about this on the show, about the indications of what makes a beer fancy. You know you're dealing with a fancy beer when uh, it comes in a cork and cage, right? That's that's uh, done to have a beer that can age a little longer. Also always signifies a beer that I spent a lot of money on. Uh, another is the wax seal. The wax seal, of course, indicates a fancy beer. But there is a third way. To indicate a fancy beer and that is the box that's right just like a fine scotch this beer comes in a box and also like a fine scotch it comes from scotland uh this one from the innocent gun brewing company this is the 06 vanishing point uh, matured for 365 days in 18-year-old Speyside single malt whiskey casks. Ho, ho. This uh, Imperial Stout comes in at 11% alcohol by volume. And uh, it's in a 500 milliliter bottle. That, so not much bigger. like just, just ever so slightly bigger than what you get in like your average craft beer size can. You know, the tall boy can. This is just a tiny bit more than that. Like barely noticeable amount more than that. Uh, yeah, so I did spend a fair bit on this one for a single beer, but I really like uh, Innocent Guns beers. Uh, everything I've had from them I've liked, and I don't, we don't always see a lot of their variations on their products here uh, in Manitoba. Like, we get their, we get their lager, we get the original, uh, we get their mango IPA every once in a while, you know, even the rum cask, Caribbean rum cask, we get once in a while, you might see something different like this one. So I couldn't resist and get it. I'm just going to read what is on the back of the box here before we, uh, crack it open. Uh, the vanishing point is something far in the distance, something always slightly beyond reach. We name our annual Imperial Stout release this to reflect our unrelenting mission to never rest on our laurels. Instead, to always push the boundaries of everything we thought possible in our brewing and maturation craft. To always keep progressing. Every ingredient is hand-selected, the absolute best we can get, and chosen with only one thing in mind, flavor. And every year we come to brew and mature it, we build on what we've done before, always refining, always progressing this beer, our apex, our vanishing point. Well, that... That's got a lot to live up to there. Uh, what a long story. Oh my gosh, there's even more. I just assumed what was below the line was in French. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's not packaged in Canada. It's packaged in Scotland. Uh, all right, well, let's just keep going. There's, there's a whole journey of a story in here. Might as well read it all and get my money's worth on this uh, expensive beer I bought. I can't remember how much it was, but it was... It was Quite a bit for, for one beer. Uh, this Imperial Stout has a lengthy maturation in casks hand-selected and sourced from a famous space-side distillery where they had been used to mature 18-year-old single malt whiskey. During its 365 days in these casks, it absorbed the characteristics of, that the whiskey left behind. Notes of winter spices, clementine, and rich fruit. These have fallen, to, have fallen into harmony with the dark chocolate, vanilla, and coffee character of the beer. Full flavor and complexity, this is truly a beer to save. Uh, served chilled but not too cold in an Innocent Gun branded goblet uh, or a big red wine glass if you don't have one. I have an Innocent Gun goblet right here. Appropriate glassware for this beer, and I had it in the beer fridge for like a few minutes, not that long. So I, I'm not going to like measure the temperature on it, but I, I feel like I'm getting this at the right temperature and in the right glass, which I'm, I'm sure is very important. Um, all right, let's... Okay, so there's no additional... There's no wax seal in addition to the box. Uh, the box is as fancy as this is going to get, but look at that bottle. That is gorgeous i just absolutely love the look of this um a nice plain classy black crown uh all right i guess i need something to open this with all right hey 
See, I, I should have done that on camera because there was a tiny bit of gun smoke there and it was gone pretty quickly. Uh, all right, let's pour this out. That is pouring out black. Black as midnight on a moonless night. Oh, man. A nice, a nice tan head. I, I'd even go so far as almost call that a brown head. That is, that is a dark, dark head with some nice bubbles in there. It almost reminds me of like, uh, like toffee or something. Um, yeah, this is going to be a nice treat. Um, okay, so on the nose, I'm getting that dark fruit and chocolate. Those are a couple of the notes that were mentioned in the uh, epic story on the box. Definitely get the, the uh, dark fruit and chocolate, which were more the characteristics of the beer rather than the uh, whiskey casks that it was matured in. Uh, the whiskey casks were supposed to leave um, winter spices, clementine, and rich fruit. Oh, so rich fruit. There you go. I guess that's dark fruit, rich fruit. Um... I honestly don't know what clementine tastes like, so I can't really comment on that. Um, yeah, but this uh, it does, and it does smell pretty strong. It smells pretty boozy as well. So the eleven percent is going to be shining through on this one. All right, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's go in for a sip. Cheers, my friends. That was really, really nice. Um, it doesn't taste as boozy as it smells. Um, I don't know if I'm getting anything with the whiskey. Oh, there we go. As it lingers. There it is. Um, so yeah, the chocolate and, and, and rich dark fruits I get. Uh, as much as I did on the nose, I get that on the taste right away. Um, and then there's just, yeah, a very slight lingering uh aftertaste of you can get a little bit of whiskey in there it says famous distillery it didn't say specifically which one it doesn't come out across as like really like smoky or anything or peaty no like those kind of notes haven't come through at all man that is nice that it's got a nice thick, creamy mouthfeel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be savoring this for a while today. <clears throat> yeah, happy birthday to me indeed. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely amazing. As I said, I can't remember what I paid for it. I know it was a lot. Um, but hey, you know, I got an epic story on the, the back of the bottle. Um, no, this is amazing. Really, really good. Uh, if you can find it, I highly recommend picking it up. Uh, especially if you are also a fan of uh, scotch whiskey as well as beer. Uh, yeah, I think you would like this. What is really impressive about this to me, though, is just like how slight uh, that that whiskey barrel taste is in here. Like, uh, I've had other Innocent Gun beers that have been aged in, in casks, and uh, it was definitely stronger in those than in this which is kind of interesting, but uh, it is part of it. And I mean, I've had other, you know, cask aged, barrel aged, barrel aged, barrel aged beers over the years. And I'm not always a fan. Sometimes I find like that the, the whiskey taste, it just becomes it's too boozy and it takes away from the beer. This is balanced so nicely. You get just a hint of it uh, and the stout's characteristics of it their own like that that chocolatey taste uh it, it rings true through the whole thing so yeah i'm very very impressed with this uh anyways thank you all for dropping by the terry isle basement pub uh we got some more episodes coming up in the near future so keep your eye open for those uh cheers my friends